In this video, I'll show you how to install our packages, read CSV data files, and work with data frames. So the first thing I'll do, as usual, is set my working directory. And I'm also going to open up a script file for what I'm going to do today. Okay, so first let me talk about our packages. So these are freely available collections of routines that we're going to use to save ourselves a lot of time. And so to install a package in, in our studio, one way to do that is to go down to the bottom right hand pane and click on packages and then install and then you just type the name of the package that you want to install into the space where it says packages and then install and then down in the console it'll give you a little progress report and then once it's ready we need to load that particular package and we do that using the library function and in this case we get a little warning message telling us about object masking but we're not going to worry about that so we have the dplyr package installed now and so we can use all the functions that are in that particular package next thing I'm going to talk about is reading data files. So the data files that are easiest to work with in R are comma separated variable files or CSV format. So for example I've got uh, a data file here called deaths from tigers and if I just open this up in a text editor you'll be able to see what the file looks like and it's it's just the variables listed for all the data observations and it's just a text format and the comma separated part is because each observation for each variable is separated with a comma you can also open this up in Excel if you have Excel installed on your computer Okay, so you can see that it's, it's it's pretty much just a spreadsheet, but it's recorded in a particular a particular format. Okay, but we're going to work in R. We're not going to work in Excel, and so we're going to read that data file into R, and we use that using the read.csv function, and then the argument that you give that function is a path to that data file and the data file name which should end in .csv okay so if I run that and then you can see over here in the top right pane there's a new tiger data data frame here So this read.csv function, one of the most common errors here is to get this file name wrong. So just to illustrate, I'm going to pretend that I think this is the name of the file without the S on the end. And if I run that, it tells me it cannot open this file. There's no such file or directory. Okay, so you have to be very careful that you get this path correct to the correct folder and then the file name correct as well. Okay, once you've successfully loaded the data, then we can summarize it. And this tells me that there's two variables, person, which is a quantitative variable because it's giving me 
some summary statistics here, the minimum first quartile, median, and so on. And then activity, which is telling me is a character variable, or we would call it a categorical variable. And then it's tell also telling me that the length of that categorical variable is 88. So we've got a sample size of 88 here. Uh, we can also take a quick look at the first six rows in the data frame. So here we've got person number one, and he was killed because he disturbed, he or she disturbed a tiger kill. Person number two was collecting forest products. Person number three was collecting grass or fodder. These are the activities that they were doing when they were killed by a tiger. So I mentioned that tiger data is what's known as a data frame. And the way that we work with data frames is if we want to just look at a particular variable in a data frame, we could just type the name of the data frame and then actually let's go up here, type the name of the data frame and then a dollar symbol and then the name of the variable. So if we run that, it'll just list out all the values for that variable. Okay, so it's the name of the data frame and then a dollar sign and then the name of the variable. The table function is pretty handy. It creates a frequency table for categorical data. So that command created the table and then this one displays it. So we can see that there were five people that were killed disturbing a tiger kill, eight people that were killed while they were fishing and so on. When we have a data frame we can create new variables for that data frame by using the same format. So there's the, there's the data frame name, tiger data, there's a dollar sign, and then this is going to be a new variable called disturb at kill. Here's my assignment operator, which we talked about last time, a less than sign and a, and a hyphen, put together in the form of a left arrow. And then I'm going to define my new variable using an if else function. So that's going to look at the activity and ask whether activity is equal to disturbing tiger kill. And if it is, then this new variable will take the value yes, otherwise it'll take the value no. So if I run that, and then we could take a quick look at that new variable, if I just run the variable name by itself, so we can see it's just yeses and noes. And if I summarize the data frame now, there's a new variable here called disturb at kill, the one we just created. Okay, so that's how to create a new variable for your data frame. What about selecting subsets from a data frame? Well, we can do that using a filter function. So the filter function is in the dplyr package. And the way that we get this to work is to type the name of the data frame as the first argument. And then we're going to filter using this variable to serve kill. And we're going to filter all the values that are equal to no for that variable. So this is going to be a new data frame which we'll call tiger data not at kill. So if I run that and then now I run my table function I'll see I have what I had before. Remember this is what we had before. We had five people that were killed by disturbing a tiger kill, 
but now with my subset data frame I have everything except for those five people so that's a way to select a subset of a data frame going back to my original data frame if I just look at that tiger table again so if you notice that the order of the of the categories here it's in alphabetical order so disturbing tiger kill fishing forest products fuel wood and timber and so on if I want to reorder that let's say in order of the frequencies so we want grass and fodder to be listed first and then what would be next forest products next and so on the way we do that is to create what's called a factor variable so we do that using the factor function it's going to be based on the activity variable from the tiger data data frame and then the levels are going to be taken from the this tiger table and it's going to be in order of the values in that table okay and we're gonna go from high to low we're gonna have the values decreasing so let's run that to see what it what happens okay so if I and I created this as a new variable in my data frame so if I summarize the data frame again you'll see I've got a new variable okay and it's a factor and it's in this order grass fodder is is first that's the most frequent category and then forest products is second and so on all the way down and then now if I into my table command I've got my categories in order of frequency so grass for the first forest product second fishing third and so on okay so that's how to create a factor variable so in this video I've shown how to install an R package and load it how to read CSV data files and then a little bit a little introduction on working with data frames